Hey, I'm Heath. In an upcoming podcast, we actually recorded the interview already, we have a discussion with Andrew Allenson of Axe Studios, the makers of Y2K, a postmodern RPG that's going to be coming out soon. Janelle and I love video game music, and it just so happens that Andrew, the guy that we were talking to, composed most of the soundtrack for Y2K. So we got to talking quite a bit about the music, and we've heard a lot of the soundtrack already. We've enjoyed listening to it, and you know how it is with music. I don't have to explain this to you. You listen to a track, and it reminds you of things sometimes. It could be a place you like, or a place you don't like, or something that happened, or a person. It could be any of, like, a billion different things. As Y2K is so far kind of a lesser-known game... And also a really unique sounding soundtrack. I thought I might take this opportunity to kind of play DJ for a little bit and throw out some tracks here, a few of my favorites from the game's soundtrack, and just share a few thoughts that I had on them. I'm not going to play entire tracks, probably. We'll, hey, we'll see where the music takes us, right? I should never talk in that voice again. I'm not going to start out with the title screen. It is big and sweeping and lovely. However, fuck convention, I'm not starting with the title theme music. I'm going to start with the one that I never skip on my music playlist. Whenever I'm walking around with my music player, this comes on, I don't skip it. You know, when you're walking around with like a thousand songs or something like that, even if you like them, that's why you put them on there in the first place, even if you like them, a lot of times you're not in the mood. You skip this. I never skip this one, even though upon first listen, it sounds kind of unconventional, a little goofy maybe, and you don't think of it, I mean, you might not think of it as an RPG theme. Growing up with like Uematsu and Sakamoto and Mitsuda, Yoko Shimomura, all these amazing RPG soundtrack composers are most famous for themes that don't quite sound like this one. So I'm as surprised as anyone that I just keep listening to this song. Check it out. like you can even you can already sing along to this one That's the theme of Alex Eagleston. And just, when I hear that, I don't know. It it sounds like somebody walking while wounded to me. It seems like the perfect backdrop for, I don't know, somebody crawling out of a car that flipped over. But not in like a serious way. I don't know. I don't know how that is not serious. But it just, I, I picture somebody walking with a with an injury-induced limp, or they're bloodied after a battle, and yet somehow kind of light-hearted, which I guess is kind of like Y2K and a few other games out there where what's going on is serious, and somehow the atmosphere is light-hearted at the same time. I ran into this in Earthbound and sort of Persona, like if you played Persona, especially Persona 4, there's like a mystery going on and we're getting inside real darkness and people are dying, but does Senpai notice me? And who's going to be my girlfriend? <laughs> and all that's going on. And j just take a listen to that soundtrack too. Anyway... Uh, Andrew, uh, w when he found that out during the interview, Andrew said, Ah, oh, that's interesting that you say that. And he goes into why he kind of got a, a smile and nod out of my description of my reaction to that song. This next one, the theme of Sammy, 
kind of in some ways reminds me of an RPG town or house theme from the mid to late 90s. And in other ways, I can picture it being a commercial or TV show opening for a, an American sitcom in like the 50s. Can't you just... I'll play this for you and see if you can't just picture like a milkman coming down the street. Or picture whatever the hell you want. I mean, it's your mind, your body, your soul. Here, here. In this one, Cat Chase, you can gradually hear the ante getting upped, the shit getting real. Those uh-ohs were me, though they're not part of the soundtrack. I'll stop talking over the songs, how about that? This next one here is called Panda's Theme, and this is where I definitely started to hear some Earthbound, and Earthbound is a game that comes up in our interview with Andrew, and you can kind of, you can see some inspiration around Y2K when you're playing it, and it's not just visual, there's some audio too. This, I don't know if it's intentional or not, but... Definitely this song, when it comes on, just those those weird little sounds that I'm not about to try to imitate, just kind of, they hit something, they hit something inside that made me think of Earthbound. Check it out. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want some piano up in this bitch? So let's take a listen to a town theme. There's a place you show up, Wind Town. This is where uh, this is where most of the demo took place for me. And hey, simple enough. This is the music that's playing while you're running around town and talking to people and occasionally battling stuff. Here it is. Thank you. 
I like this one too. It's called The Machine and the Crow. I'll answer two quick questions for you. Yes, this is her first time singing in English, and yes, it is adorable. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you need some strings up in this bitch? This one's called Tutorial Dungeon. No idea where this is gonna play. Make sure nobody else is in the room, because this one's a sad one. It's called Thinking of You Whenever You Are. I like that it's, mm, what am I trying to say here? Not every sad song has to be like this big, powerful melody that just knocks you off your feet and brings in like waves of sad. It, there's beauty in simplicity, and, and uh, I, I find that one uh, pretty sad myself. It's a good little tune. And this next one, this one here, The Lonely Panda and the Stuffed Crow, you can kind of hear... A little bit of that Alex Eagleston theme and uh, the Machine and the Crow kind of come back around. I like when soundtracks do that. It just, it's like it knows what it's doing. Here, check this out.
When I first listened to this next one, Puzzle Pieces, I heard a part that just kind of reminded me of some Bright Eyes songs, which I enjoy. I find uh, nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. That's a big plus in my book. Ask at hand, please just understand. I can't give you what you want to know till I know. Where's the piece of this puzzle? I'm begging for So during the interview, I took the chance to ask Andrew, I said, hey, are you by chance a Connor Oberst or Bright Eyes fan? And he said, oh, no, not really, not so much. Why do you ask? And I, because I asked about puzzle pieces. And I said, oh, it sounds like, it sounds like a Bright Eyes fan had to write that. It turns out, no. Check this out. He told me about, initially, the song sounded a lot more like Queen. It sounded like a Freddie Mercury song. And if you haven't heard Queen, well, then I just feel bad for you. Go, go, go fix your life right now. You've got a lot more things to worry about than podcasts and video games. Get, get experiencing the music of Queen. Go. Did you go? All right. Now that it's just you and me, people who know Queen, I can point out that such influences could hardly be more different. And I can move on to the next song. This one's called Uzu Battle. I hope I'm saying that right. It's just spelled U-Z-U. And once again, I can hear the earthbound all over the place in the very best way. I'm sorry, do you need the Japanese language up in this bitch? I kind of love how just this one here has energy coming from every direction. It's called Hipster Bound. If you're not having fun with that, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, and there are, there are of course others. I did not go through the whole soundtrack here. Not my intention. Just to, to play a little bit of the music for you to see what we were talking about during this interview. Our interview with Andrew should go live pretty shortly. It's taken a bit of time, but I'm not going to bore you with offline anecdotes about whatever. 
a good chunk of the Y2K soundtrack is already on this website, Bandcamp. Not sure if you've heard of it. A lot of musicians can put their work on there, and it's kind of like a streaming service. You can kind of sample things before you buy. So you can go give full songs a play or two or ten if you want, and you can find these at andrewallinson.bandcamp.com. That's Andrew, A-N-D-R-E-W, Allinson, A-L-L-A-N-S-O-N, and then a dot, the period there, Bandcamp, B-A-N-D-C-A-M-P, dot com. There's a bunch of songs on there, and a bunch more in the actual game, so look forward to our podcast about the legacy of Earthbound and all kinds of new RPGs and the interview with Andrew of Axe Studios makers of Y2K. Thanks for listening today. Thanks for letting me get my my first stint DJing. I should do more of these. This was fun. Hey, and now we're going to close. The last song here will be the title screen song. I feel like that that's a good ender, ironically. So that's what we're going to finish with. Thanks again. See you next time, everybody. 